The private sector pledges $250 million in refugee assistance. Zambia suspends 15% export duty on gemstones. An IMF board approves financing package to pave way for Somalia debt relief. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us on Business Incorporated. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwago. Let's get the show started with the markets and intraday figures coming from the African stock markets we track, where neither here nor there as markets moved sideways. The Nigerian All Share Index traded, traded around the flat line at 26,661 points at midday. The South African bourse was down 0.17%. In Egypt, the index was, however, up 0.40% while the KM market was 0.39% lower at the end of Wednesday session. And in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia's stock market appears to be extending gains for a fifth straight session, while markets in United Arab Emirates were subdued. Saudi's benchmark index rose 0.3% at intraday. Meanwhile, Saudi Aramco shares fell a further 0.7% to 36.5 rials a day after their inclusion in the MSCI Emerging Markets Index. The oil giant is also joining the FTSE benchmark today. Qatar remains closed for public holiday. The Abu Dhabi index was down 0.05% at intraday, while in Dubai, the index slipped 0.68% also at intraday. In Europe, stocks turned negative in the morning as investors monitored economic data and interest rate decisions from central banks, with markets showing minimal reaction to U.S. Uh, President Donald Trump's impeachment. Well, let's um, get a sense of how that and um, all the developments in the European space are coming up with Conrad Vusen. Hi, Conrad. Good afternoon again. Good afternoon, Jimmy. And let's not forget, only six days to go till Christmas. I'm actually counting down with you, Conrad. Anyway, uh, let's look at what's happening in Sweden. Uh, Rick's bank has raised its interest rates to 0%, ending a five-year experiment with negative interest rates and becoming the first central bank in the world to ditch the controversial policy. What are the implications of this for the rest of Europe and um, the financial markets? Well, you know, Jimmy, the Reichsbank or the Riksbank in Sweden is the oldest central bank worldwide. So everything coming from Stockholm there is considered to be important. And in particular, of course, this decision, as you said, it's the first bank to end this experiment of negative interest rates. And it's perceived as a strong statement on the markets. It's perceived as a strong statement by this central bank that negative interest rates should not be the new normal. Of course, this sort of has reactivated also the discussion here in the euro area, whether or not to expect something comparable from the European Central Bank. Uh, if you discuss that, you have to keep in mind that, of course, the conditions in Sweden are different compared to the euro area. Both. Uh, central banks, the ECB and the Reichsbank, both have this inflation target, this target of an average increase of consumer prices of 2% or slightly below that. But unlike the Eurozone, in Sweden, this target has been met for quite a while now. So there's good reason for the Swedes to increase their interest rates and good reason for the ECB not to do it yet. Still, of course, we have to keep in mind that uh, the negative implications that those negative interest rates have are not only limited to Sweden. The Reichsbank has been mentioning the house prices on the real estate market, which have been exploding in the country. Also, uh, the average household debt in Sweden is very high, also credit card debt. In parts, at least, we have problems like this in all of Western Europe. So, of course, we can be sure that the people at the ECB here in Frankfurt have been closely and attentively been listening to what the Reichsbank had to say today. And the Bank of England's policymakers, of course, have um, had a meeting too. What sticks out there is the topic of climate change. The bank plans to stress test lenders and issuer, insurers in the UK against different environmental scenarios. How do you folks in Europe view this? Um, is this a good idea? 
Oh, yes, it is a good idea. Of course, monetary policymakers need to know what's going on in the economy and, you know, in the real world. And it's a fact that, you know, the heating up of our climates worldwide is going to be the dominant factor this century. Everyone who's denying this is simply in denial of scientific facts. Uh, so it's good to make the financial system fit for the challenges of uh, climate change and for the difficulties uh, that uh, come along with it. Uh, you know, it's very difficult to price the risk involved uh, when you live in a world with a more shaky climate and with more influence of natural disasters. Munich Re today, the world's largest reinsurance company, which is based here in Germany, in Munich, uh, also says that uh, this is a problem. Uh, it's seeing higher demand for insurance uh, climate, for insuring climate risk, but it also says some risks might be too expensive to insure. And it's reported from some regions of this world already that if you are a homeowner, it's difficult uh, to get an insurance for your home because of uh, you know, the risk that insurance companies perceive in terms of natural disasters. That, of course, is a very negative impact on home prices, on house prices. But also, if you're a businessman or businesswoman, would you want to decide on investments in a region like this? All those implications have to be considered. All right, in corporate news, chipmaker Micron came out with its latest earnings report and outlook. Has a cyclical bottom been finally reached there after Micron got slammed by a memory chip glut for quite a while now? Yes, at least uh, Micron or its CEO, Mr. Sanjay Merotra, is saying so. He says that the current quarter um, is the cyclical bottom for the financial performance of Micron, that demand in certain parts of the chip business, in particular, for example, when it came, came, comes to DRAM computer chips, the demand there has increased significantly in recent months. The positive reaction on uh, the uh, trading floor today in uh, the German and the European equity market is reflecting this. Micron's share price is up nicely. It has been gaining quite significantly over the last 12 months. There is a risk that we shouldn't forget if we talk about Micron. It's one of the large suppliers of Huawei, this Chinese technology company, which is so much in the political spotlight right now. As a consequence, I think it's worth uh, also noting another sentence that Mr. Marotra, Micron's CEO, said today. He said, the base assumptions of the company uh, are that there are no perturbations to the demand environment due to macroeconomic conditions or trade-related developments. There you are. We have the trade topic again, of course. This is going to preoccupy Micron, the whole chip industry, and of course, all of us in the coming months as well. Hmm. All right, Conrad, we have just one day to get into the holiday mood, even though I don't have a holiday, but I'm sure <laughs> you do. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of the day. See you tomorrow, Conrad.